Hi everybody, Mr. Bauer here. Uh, so I wanted to send you a quick note home about the what we've been working on with multiplying two-digit numbers by a one-digit number. Um, this is part of the Common Core, but more importantly, this is just conceptually understanding what we're doing. Instead of just hitting up the step-by-step uh, -step paper and pencil method, four times three is two, put the one up here, three times one plus one is four. Instead of doing that, I want to take just a day today to make sure the kids are really knowing what they're doing and why. So what I've done over here is I've got our base 10 blocks. I've, I've got 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and then I have that a second time and a third time. And what I'm showing the kids here is this is an array of 14 by 3. We have 14 three times. That way we can actually see it. Okay, so when I look at this, I can look at the different parts. So I'm going to take a look at the 3 times 10 part, and I've got three, or three tens, 10, 20, 30. So the first part is simply 30. That's this part right here. If you go look over the ones, we have 4, 4, and 4. We have four groups of 3. And so 4 times 3 we know is 12. So we took 14 and we broke it apart into 10 and 1s. So now we just want to put them back together and we get 42. All right. Another way we could do this without modeling with base 10 blocks is I'll put these off to the side. What we could do is we could say we had one 10 here, we had four t ones here, and then we have three. So one 10 times three tens, or I'm sorry, one 10, which is 10 times three equals 30. Four ones times three, four times three equals 12. Here you'll see our 30 and our 12, 30 and our 12. We broke them apart. Now we simply put them together and we get 42. Again, the reason I'm showing you guys this is because this is gonna help us understand why eventually we put a two here, we carry the one up here, we multiply. I want our kids to know not just a series of steps, but why and why they're multiplying and how it works. All right, so let me know if you have any questions. Um, what I just showed you here, this is kind of considered an area model, and this over here is partial products. As I told the kids, if we slow down a little bit and really understand what we're doing, the good news is, in the long run, we'll be able to solve these problems, even mentally at times, um, instead of having to get the paper and pencil out. But if we take just a little bit of time practicing it, then we'll be good to go as far as that mental math goes. So again, thank you. Let me know if you have questions, and we'll see you next time.